Dear brothers and dear sisters, welcome to the multimedia department in our Sabbath school study today. And blessed Sabbath to everybody. Uh, we would like to invite you to study with us the Word of God. Here we have Pastor Pablo Hunger, the Secretary of the General Conference, and you servant Tredan Petkov. With the help of the Lord, we would like to have a short review on the previous lesson and also to enjoy the study of the new lesson. Let's have a silent prayer all together. Amen. The previous uh, lesson, Sabbath school lesson, speaks about uh, a very important symbol which we found in the Bible. It's the symbol about Jesus Christ as the Good Shepherd. And uh, also the true believers as a symbol as a good sheep that know the voice of their shepherd and follow him where he goes. We understand that this follow the shepherd will not be just a part of our life here on earth, but also they will follow the shepherd in eternity. And uh, uh, that is an indication also to the 144,000 that will be with Jesus Christ all the time. And uh, <clears throat> we understand in this previous lesson uh, the very important message that the Lord want, wants to put together in one flock all the believers that are spread right now in different places, all those who hear his voice, they will join him, and it will be one flock, and it will be one shepherd, Jesus Christ himself. May the Lord bless us and help us to recognize his voice among the so many voices that we hear in the world, so many false teachers, false shepherds, trying to turn in pieces the flock of the, of the Lord and uh, thieves and people trying to damage the work of the Lord. But those who hear the voice of Christ, they will be one and they will follow him. He will open the door and he will close the door and he will guide them to green pasture. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now... <clears throat> A natural transition to the new lesson is the title, which uh, speaks about a discipleship. Jesus Christ now sent disciples. The same way as Jesus promised that he's going to call the ships of all other flocks and he bring them in one place, then he fulfilled his promise. And how? By sending disciples. Disciples. And this new lesson speaks about this discipleship. It's so important and so wonderful lesson. But maybe before we speak about the, the new lesson, we need to remind that we have our missionary report from Haiti. Haiti is a very, <clears throat> a very poor country. I remember even before the earthquake, we had a trouble to enter in that country because it was very dangerous for all foreigners. Even staying in the hotel, they could be insulted, they could be taken, and, and uh, their property could be robbed. And walking in the street was not safe. And now, especially after the, during the earthquake, so many people died, and epidemies and sickness were spread all around. Right now, the situation is more balanced, but still poverty. It's uh, all over, and uh, all organizations of, uh, of trying to help, like Red Cross and other, uh, bringing some food and fresh water, but still, it's way not enough to cover the needs of this population. Now, we have our brethren, and we have brethren in the capital, and we have also other churches inside of, uh, of the island, the, the Haiti was visited by Brother uh, 
uh, Hiner, and also from Mexico, we have the Martin visit Lagunas. of Brother Martin Lagunas, regional representative, and uh, Brother Larry Watts was the last one visiting Haiti. And we're taking care for the brethren, bringing um, help, and literature, but uh, it is uh, way not enough to cover the, the real needs of the brethren. So we will appreciate if you read this report and that we can collaborate, all of us, each one of us, as much as we can, to support our brethren in Haiti in this difficult uh, situation. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. That is uh, part of the discipleship, actually, the donations, right? Mm -hmm. it is, and we're going to speak now about how we can sacrifice for the church. How can we collaborate for spreading the gospel? Other disciples sent out. Uh, Jesus uh, have incredible working plan, right? And very successful mission. Imagine he was working about three years, two and a half years, and he could already have how many? 70 people, 70 disciples that were willing to go and to preach and spread the gospel. I will be happy if we can have 70 workers in the American Union, right? <laughs> that goes all around the United States. But let's see a little more about this issue. Let's stop for a while in the, uh, the call of medical evangelism, which is our uh, introductory uh, testimony. The evangelization of the world is the work that God has given to those who go forth in his name. So, I just want to stop here. It's not this evangelization of my family, of my kids and my neighbors and Cedar Town and the, the neighborhood. It's the evangelization of the world. We have a tremendous great mission, right? And since we are just in the beginning now, the end of the year 2011 and the beginning of 2012, I think that's the the best lesson that could, we could really have. And it's the last lesson in our Savage School booklets today. <clears throat> and we have uh, such a great lesson. We have to evangelize the world. Let's uh, think about the next year, 2012, and do efforts how we can evangelize the world. And uh, <clears throat> let's go and see question number one. On another occasion, how many disciples did the Lord send out to preach the gospel and prepare the way for him? What was their mission and what opposition did they meet? Pastor Hunger, he have been also in many countries spreading the message, so it will be nice to hear. Yeah, the Lord Jesus mentioned uh, the harvest truly is great. But the labors are few. Pray ye therefore uh, the Lord of the harvest that he may send four labors into his harvest. Uh, as you mentioned, the evangelization of the world is our challenge. And Jesus already in his time, as we see here in verse number one, he sent 70 uh, missionaries and he also organized them two by two. And he sent in different places that they may share the good news. When, as you was just mentioning, we are now in the door of 2012, just since the beginning. When the Lord wished that we may have this, uh, make this uh, as goal in our life, as is here in the introduction, the middle part, work with the heart, fill it with an earnest longing for souls. The Lord wished that we may be one of those laborers that he is needing in order to prepare his second coming. We are closer to the coming of the Lord closer than before since we are already finishing one more year, but we need to be one of those that are going to take this challenge in our hearts and work with our full heart to save souls that are, going, that are perishing. Every day that passes in our history, what does it mean that the year is finishing? It means that every day that is finishing, how many souls have lost their lives, or maybe without hearing this message? And what is the responsibility that we have? But the Lord also say, as is here in the question, 
in the last part of the question, what uh, was the, the mission and what opposition will they meet? Jesus mentioned, uh, go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Uh, Jesus was called the lamb, but in the past lesson we studied that also he was the good shepherd. And we also need to have <laughs> the same goals. We need to be lambs, but also we need to be a blessing for others, help others, and be the under shepherds, uh, and help others to find this, this fall, that they may be also among the people of God, that they may also receive this blessing, that they may also hear the good news, that they may also find the light, the spiritual light, as we were studying in this uh, whole lesson, uh, that was showing the example of Jesus. Oh, no, the last lesson is tell, okay, I show you my whole life. Now, I want you to be my disciple. I, I want you to be one of those 70 to go. Amen, know? amen, wonderful. Jesus did not say, okay, go and you will have an easy life. No, he doesn't say that. He, he says you will be like lambs among wolves, which means difficulties, uh, opposition, maybe persecution. The people will try to eat you up, to destroy you, to contradict you. That is the natural uh, reaction of the human nature. The Pharisees will be angry. And we know all the consequences that takes place, but we're going to see that no matter of the opposition, God is stronger, right? Yeah, as yes. you mentioned here, in the note, the world is to be won. Yes. And no soul should rest satisfied with the superficial knowledge of the truth. Why? It continues saying here, because we have this responsibility to share the truth. And as Jesus sent the 70, we need to go and to share to all kinds of, of, of level of society. Here is mentioned that we will speak before judges, that we will speak before a, le a legislative courts, we will speak before kings, and before the, the learning of the air to answer for their faith. We need to answer for our faith. That's why we need to take this time that the Lord gave us and this new commitment this new year to study deeply his word that we may give also reason of our faith and that we may be one of these disciples, the true disciples of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. The second question is already under other under title, Instructions for Evangelism. Mm -hmm. Now we can see here a, a precious advices from the scriptures in how we can do evangelism work. And uh, what was unusual about their preparation for the mission? And who will provide their sustenance? <clears throat> Why were they instructed to avoid common greetings. We have three questions, a little bit too many, but uh, we can try to, to be more short and to the point. It is uh, incredible the, the system which Jesus Christ used. He didn't have much in, uh, income. He didn't have much, many or much funds to finance uh, big evangelizations. He didn't have computer projectors. He, he didn't uh, have the, even the plan to rent a big place, a stadium, a Roman stadium was very popular theater at that time. No, he used very simple method. Didn't cost anything to the church and have a tremendous success. Apostle, <clears throat> Apostle Paul also they follow this uh, system of Jesus Christ and other apostles in their work, and they never, never fail. What could you say, Pastor uh, Hunger, in regard of the methods of Jesus Christ of evangelization? Let's see, <laughs> question number two. We have several Bible verses. Yes, I like to just mention the Bible verse here. Say, carry neither purse, nor script, nor shoes. And uh, this is one of the of the, what is mentioned here, on how can we do the work if we don't carry the provisions? This what automatically came to our mind, that we are used to be overprotected for this, for that. But uh, the Lord wanted us to understand that we are 
under his care. As we studied in the past uh, Sabbath, uh, he wants to guide us as the good shepherd. And he mentioned why also there. In, his, in the verse number 7, he says, And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the labor is worthy of his uh, hire. He's mentioning that on here is there are two different important messages for the church, how much we should be practicing the hospitality, that we should understand that those that are servants of the Lord, they are depending on the support that we give. We cannot say, I already pay my contribution to the church, I already did my part. No, we need to understand that this is also part of this missionary work that uh, every one of us should be part. And why also not to carry? Because the Lord wants not to put our burdens or worries on the preparation. What we have, as you mentioned, I don't have equipment, then how can I preach? No. The Lord say, I will open the way. The one that touched the heart is the Holy Spirit, and that we need to go and share the good news, and he will provide. And also the last question say, why we should not uh, use the common greetings? Or interesting here also it is mentioned uh, in, the in the testimony, testimony the yeah? One, yeah yeah because he wanted to show them nothing must be allowed to divert the mind from the great work mm -hmm. that's why not the belonging or neither also the way of speaking mm -hmm. that also in the main in the message that they need to speak they need to be already something special something attractive that they need to uh, feel the heart. And also Jesus mentioned, as we will see afterward, how they should speak to the people, what kind of message they should give. But everything was, to post, was supposed to be a testimony in the mission. I, I, I come in my mind when it says you don't take anything with you, even no, no food, no dress. It it's looks like almost like the, the, the test that the Lord did to the soldiers of, of Gideons. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, those who are afraid, let them go home. Lord, those who have this and that, that, let them go home. And even finally, the, the number remained there too many, he says. So let's go to the water. So he screened and screened the people in order to have only the very, very dedicated ones. And that's what Jesus did here. Who will be willing to go without having anything in his pocket? Just going like that, without dress, without shoes. Uh, of course, having this appearance, you can appeal also to the mercy of the people. Because if you are well-dressed, if you have a nice car, yeah, people will say, he, he has money to go to a restaurant. Why, why shall I invite him in my house, right? But uh, <clears throat> it... Uh, in order to jump in in such a mission, it requires a lot of faith and full confidence, full dedication. And that is what we need to learn in order to have a successful missionary work. If we don't have that, we can have a lot of funds. We can use high-tech technology and we will never achieve the result which Jesus achieved with their, his disciples with very little uh, sources or, or with no means practically. Excuse me. Question number three says, what special blessing were contained in the greeting express when they entered in the homes? Now, <clears throat> when they were entering in the home, they were supposed to greet, not that they should not greet the people and they be bad educated, as we can understand some people can interpret the scriptures, but they had a special greeting, a greeting that was not common for the common people. What was that kind of greeting, dear brother? Shalom. <laughs> Pass be to this house. That's right. They the Lord, say shalom. <laughs> they wanted to greet the people already with a divine message. Mm -hmm. Because which house, house does not need peace? Mm -hmm. We are longing for peace. Peace because we are having worries how we will continue for the next day. Worry about our children. This is the life of the human being. Which house does not wish to have peace? And that was the greeting that Jesus provided for them, that they may go and say, peace be to this house. 
It's interesting that the Lord wanted that the first contact the people have, straight away the message of the Lord goes out. And uh, I use many times in conversation to say, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we do some, you know, talking about the news and other things. But for Jesus, that was already wasting of time. Even greeting with a worldly greetings, that wasting of time. You go greet people, they straight away peace be on this house. It was very dedicated mission, straight to the point. And this why I believe was also very successful. What work of mercy were they to carry out? So, <clears throat> and what's special about the message they were to preach. Now, we connect with the uh, previous lessons that we studied already, and with these lessons, and also with our message to Haiti. So what was, how the preaching of the gospel was supposed to be carried out, not just with words, not the theory alone, but a praxis is very important to face the needs of the people. The reality is when, when is somebody is sick in the house, everybody is concerned. Or if more, if it's a, a serious sickness, is the, the concern of, of all the family is, is, is suffering because of this situation. That's why they cannot bring only the spiritual peace. They were also a, a res, a responsible to look, and that's why it's mentioned here in Lucas 10, and heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Interesting, because also the message, the kingdom of God, a new experience, now is a new, a, 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 yeah, a new Lord going to be in this house when we give our hearts, when we change also our, our way of living, that will also help us to be healthy. The diet is also an important issue that today we have some so great message as was mentioned in the beginning, we should do this medical missionary work, bring the health to the people, but as well as to help them to understand how we can praise God with our body. Mm -hmm. Missionary, medical missionary work, very important. Imagine we send people and say, go house to house, preach the gospel, no money, no food, nothing. You will find something there other way. It's not so easy to find these people today, but if we have it, you see what happened. The Lord was also providing miracles mm -hmm. with the hands of these disciples. <coughs> and the Lord also ordained them for that work, which we find to be very, very important. <coughs> today, we need to follow these instructions, dear brother and dear sisters. We need to, to go forward by faith and not wait that, that the church support us financially, not waiting that somebody else give us the instructions, give us the, the, the middles, give us the technology, give us everything, and still we, uh, we're suffering and trying and don't know if we shall go, we shall not go. That's not the way how Jesus wanted his message to be preached. He wanted that we go decided not even greet the people with their worldly greeting, but give them a divine message through our greeting and the first words that we share with them. What was in the fifth questions were there, what was to be their approach toward people who were not interested in or were opposed to their message? Now we come to the walls that will be around the ships, right? That's what Jesus says that it will happen. And um, what did the Lord say? What to do with them? Fight with them? <laughs> Respond them with the way they have done it? Yes, interesting. The Lord never wished that we may uh, up, start a confrontation with the people mm -hmm. because that will never be done a peace, the greeting that there was peace being to this house. But the Lord says that they should uh, also give a message there. Even, it says, even the very dust of your city, which clever on us, we'd weep, uh, weep off against you. Uh, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. It was also mentioning that 
Everybody can will carry the responsibility. You share the message. Then if they don't want, do not force them either. But just mention they are responsible. You just leave and go to the next place. Mm -hmm. Because everybody needs to be responsible and give answer one day before the Lord. That's right. It's important because sometimes people are tempted like the disciples of Jesus, like James and John, and say, Lord, send thunders coming from heaven and burn <laughs> this city. <laughs> Curse them. Tell them you're going to hell. You will be lost and all these things. That's not the mission that the Lord have committed us, right? We're not supposed to, to curse the people. We're supposed to bless them. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to shout to the people and, and, and demonstrate a bad character. But we're supposed to demonstrate a character of a lamb, the character of ship, the character of softness, of meekness and love. And that was uh, what the message is about and the, the testimony, yeah. right? And here it is written in the spirit of prophecy. They were not to do this for motive of resentment or through wounded dignity, mm -hmm. but to show how grievous a thing it is to refuse the Lord's message or his messenger. To re reject the Lord's servant is to reject Christ himself. That they may also in these closing words make an appeal to the people to understand that there's something that they, they are a serious situation in front of them. Just because we're interested here, not take this personally, but says that they, they are rejecting the messenger, the, the one that is sending the message, Christ, because we are fulfilling the mission of Christ. Yeah. But at the same time, I can understand that they did that leaving the city, they just swept the dust mm -hmm. of their fits as in testimony, but they didn't come in personal confrontation with mm -hmm. people. Either they tell them something, you know, at the same spirit as they had, uh, <coughs> the worldly people. And this spirit changed later in the Christian church by the apostasy, and we found about 200, 300 years after Christ, the Christian church already armed with swords and and, and um, going, killing all the people that don't accept Christ and persecuting the, the Jewish people, killing all the family, family exterminated in Alexandria. I remember these terrible things in the name of Christ and uh, <clears throat> a, such an a antichrist a spirit mm -hmm. that have been revealed uh, later on in Christianity and until our days. Uh, wars have been taking place in the name of, uh, of the Lord, which is a blasphemy mm -hmm. in point of view of the biblical truth. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the question number six. What excellent result did they experience in the carrying out their holy mission? Let's see now what kind of blessing or result they obtained. Jesus told them, you will be like sheep in the middle of wolves. That's right. <laughs> it was a great challenge. It was not easy. But, but uh, the sound... He told them also, you need to be clever like the snake, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the result is a great yeah. result. Yeah. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through, the, through thy name. And he said unto them, I, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. That was a great blessing after. And this is something that uh, we need to think. The Lord wants to give us more. When we are his disciples, we receive also blessing. My father told me, son, if you work uh, and dedicate your life for secular business, you will go to job, you come back, you did something, and you will do that all the days of your life. And that will be everything the same. But if you work and serve the Lord, that was also a good motivation for me serving the Lord. You will be working with souls, so you will receive a joy of people that really have experienced a change in their life. When you are working for the eternity, and this is what they experienced. They came back with the joy. And the Lord wants also to give us this experience, to rescue others, is to rescue from death. Very, very nice. And I think, brother and sir, that these 70 disciples, they were not, uh, the 
12 disciples, there are 70 disciples. They were not uh, like, uh, they were just common people. They, they didn't have a very special education. They were uh, volunteers, like lay workers, lay uh, collaborator or, or co-workers in, uh, in the vineyard of Christ. And look what kind of miracles takes place and they experience in their work. You don't need to be a president of the general conference to expect that the Spirit of God will move things and you can preach successfully and through your hands miracles can be performed. Everybody can do that, not because of us, but because Jesus is the same, the Spirit of God is the same, and if the Jesus tells you go, then you have to go. And this is so simple and so powerful. Even the devil did not resist mm -hmm. these 70 messengers because the Lord is so powerful, so strong. And the last question is at the front of us, how great was the power they received? And that's related already with the promise that the Lord made, and it is given not only to this 70, but the promise that wow. Jesus gave is given to everyone, all the co-workers, lay workers, employed in the work, leaders or not leaders, simple, new member or old member, young people or elderly people, no matter if they're sisters or brothers, if they're rich in money or education or they're poor and they're not educated, that is not the matter. The matter is, who want to be part of this business, the business of the Lord? And what was the power they received? Brother yeah, we Lord. see that there were many miracles that the Lord operated through, through they used them as instruments. The text here is mentioned, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be any means hard to you. We see here the fully protection of the Lord. And the other part of the question say that what kind of joy do we have? When here is mentioned, know that we experience those miracles, that we have this power that nobody else has, no. But that we are instrument in the hand of the Lord, and because of this, here is mentioned the Bible text, because your names are written in heaven. When I like to read also the statement here, Rejoice not in the possession of power, lest you lose sight of your dependence upon God. The less you cherish yourself, the more these things and full will be your comprehension of the excellence of your Savior. The more closely you connect yourselves with the source of light and power, the greater light will be shed upon you, and the greater power will be yours to work for God. Amen. How wonderful is when we humble ourselves before the Lord, he can use us as instruments to do great work. That's why we don't need to take things. That's why the Lord said, just go. I will be the one doing the work. We are instruments in his hand. We are finishing today, the uh, year, 2011. Let's do this new communion. That we may go in the hand of the Lord, that we may humble ourselves every day new, that we may see more of his light, more of his blessing, that we receive more power from him, that we may be his instrument. The Lord wants to give his miracles today. The days are not going to be better in 2012. The prophecy says that the days are going to be difficult, mm -hmm. but the promise of the Lord are for his children. That's why we should not fear. But we should remember that the great shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, nothing should be against me. Amen. This is what is the promise of the Lord here. Amen. That is the very important thing. Thank you. It, <clears throat> dear brother and dear sister, we enter in the new year. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you the power of the Lord. The same measure he gives to his disciples, of these 70 disciples. And uh, mm. uh, the only things they have with them is their faith and they desire to work for the Lord. And that's what the Lord requires. 
And the biggest gift that we can receive for this new year is not the material things, because that will be wasted, that will be damaged, that will be burned by the fire when the end of the world comes. But the best presence and gift we can obtain is the Spirit of God. They can, he can enable us to do such a great work and to write your name and the books of heaven. May God bless you, dear sister and dear brother. Amen. Amen.